Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, I have the opportunity this morning uh, to deliver the state of county uh, of the county address, um, and I am uh, very excited to do that because um, I believe, and I hope that all of my commissioners believe, uh, that we have made excellent progress in the past year on many issues. I'm proud to, to say that the state of the county is strong. As mayor of Broward County, I chose the theme at the beginning of, la of this mayoral term of community collaboration, achieving more together. My goal for this year was to continue to work to solve our affordable housing crisis, serve the needs of those experiencing homelessness, and support seniors to continue aging with dignity at home. And I'm proud to say that we have made great progress in these areas. Broward County continues to be Collaboration County, a moniker given to us by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation when we accepted the Culture of Health Prize back in, in 2019. The Broward Commission is keenly aware that we don't achieve success alone. It takes a strong partnership of our municipalities, the school board, our two hospital districts, the Children's Services Council, our nonprofits, educational institutions, and the business community and our residents to make this county everything that it is today. We have identified innovative programs to assist the homeless, and we have strengthened our commitment to provide services to help people get back on their feet. And we have worked with our community partners to address the affordable housing crisis. Since the voters first approved creation of Broward's Affordable Housing Trust Fund in 2018, this board, has invested $140 million to help build over 6,000 new affordable rental units across the county, with thousands more on the way. For fiscal year 25, 2025, the county commission allocated $25 million to, affordable, to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. These dollars will provide gap financing for the construction of new multifamily units, meaning that we provide a subsidy to the developer to make new family rental units possible. And for, uh, we have increased the period of time that these units stay affordable from 30, 30 to 50 and some even 99 years. We recently awarded 28.4 million in gap financing to five affordable housing projects which will create 591 affordable units, and an additional three million was awarded to an, for a 92-unit senior housing project in the, multi, in the municipal service, Broward Municipal Services District. This brings to us to a total of 13 projects for seniors with a combined 1,514 units, built with 62 million in gap financing. Just a reminder, gap financing is a loan it is repaid to the county and rolled over for future development. Back in February, the County Commission passed Housing Broward, a 10-year affordable housing plan, which provides a critical policy framework for addressing Broward County's affordable housing crisis with the theme, leading the challenge and sharing the burden. It was developed in partnership with FIU's Metropolitan Center. The master plan provides a coordinated and integrated approach that connects affordable housing and other critical uh, planning and policy topics, including economic development, land use and zoning, transportation, infrastructure, and climate change. This 10-year master plan is the first countywide master plan in the state of Florida, and it provides a solid path for our county and our cities to move forward with innovative solutions to conquer our affordable housing crisis. I need to say at this moment, I'm trying to recognize, and it is difficult, I'm recognizing I know specific people, but because they are uh, the leaders in specific areas on our staff, and I do want to recognize that none of this would happen uh, without uh, the benefit of uh, Ralph Stone, uh, who is the director uh, of our financing uh, area for affordable housing, because he is open to listening, he's anxious to move forward quickly, 
Um, and we just owe him a debt of gratitude for all the work he has done to move this, this particular uh, issue forward. Back in February, the County Commission passed housing, excuse me, these major accomplishments reflect Broward County's dedication to enhancing the quality of life for our residents. And I want to say that I'm very proud of this work. I am confident that we will make more progress in the next decade with this plan in place. Homelessness is another affordable housing issue. That's how you solve homelessness, with affordable housing. The passage of House Bill 1365, the anti-public sleeping camping law, which was passed in Tallahassee, effectively criminalizes homeless across the state increases the, and increases the urgency for Broward County to expand our transitional housing capacity. In addition to the many programs that Broward County already has in place, commissioners have set aside in our budget seed money for a pallet shelter program. It is my hope that we will provide we will decide on a location for this project shortly and collaborate with United Way and other partners to get this project off the ground as quickly as possible as one solution to a difficult and growing problem. Though the need for transitional housing is great, our priority still has to be permanent supportive housing. I believe that housing is a human right and the absence of a home means living in fear and uncertainty. Individuals and families face unimaginable challenges that strip away their dignity and their hope. This year, we expanded the funding for our eviction, our eviction prevention program, which has prevented the eviction of 555 families in Broward, including 320 children. The existing program administered by Legal Aid of Broward County will be expanded, and an additional eviction prevention program will be funded at Coast to Coast Legal Aid, which will focus on preventing evictions of senior citizens. Broward County is also working to prevent homelessness through Project Home Again, our landlord recruitment initiative that rec recruits landlords to provide housing for individuals and families experiencing homelessness. To date, the program has been extremely successful with over 350 landlords in Broward to prov that provide housing. In the true spirit of collaboration, I want to thank the many part community partners who joined forces with the county's Housing Options Solution and Supports Team, known as HAAS, to address the root causes of homelessness for individuals at uh, Broward County Transit's terminal in Fort Lauderdale and West Regional Transit Terminal in Plantation. At this la launch in February, about 50 people were taken to shelters connected with mental health and substance abuse services or received other medical attention. Little by little, these partnerships are making a difference. While we face the challenges of affordable housing, homeless, and other human service needs, it's important to understand that these conditions exist within an otherwise robust economy in Broward County. Broward is one of only five counties in Florida and one of the few counties nationally to have a AAA rating with, S with s and Moody's, and Fitch. Our diverse economy and effective management practices are at the core of this business success. We also passed a $7.7 .7 billion budget for fiscal year 2025 without increasing the millage rate. This past year, we celebrated many achievements across our economic engines. Port Everglades welcomed a record new 3.8 million passengers this past year. Disney Cruise Line started sailing here a year round in November of last year, and in July added its newest ship, Disney Destiny, which is expected uh, uh, to which is expected to be uh, called be the home port. We are expected to be the home port in 2025. This brand new ship, uh, 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 excuse me, two brand new ships were named. Uh, at Port Everglades this year, Celebrity Cruises, Celebrity Ascent, and the fourth ship is the innovative Edge Class and Silver Seas, Silver Nova. We also welcomed a new Princess Line, uh, Cruise Line, Sun Princess. We also had one other important thing happen at the port this year, and that was welcoming our new outstanding port director, Joe Morris. 
It's been an amazing year thanks to Joe and his outstanding staff. And I must say, if I can find it, Joe, uh, it's supposed to be here. Yeah, I had a, um, I had a call, a, a text yesterday, and it was from none other Pete Buttigieg of the Department of Transportation. And it said, congratulations, it was to me, Mayor, congratulations on behalf of the DOT, uh, of the DOT on the Port Everglades project, which I'm really excited about. It's actually the largest county award of the infrastructure development program this year. And I know it's going to make a difference to get this kind of equipment to support the electric communications program and do everything you are working to do out there and benefit the American supply chain. It's a competitive process, so you should be very proud and we're thrilled to be able to support you. Pete Buttigieg, thank you. Okay, let me get back where I am now. Okay. Okay, I'm proud to say that during my tenure as mayor this year, when you add up the cargo and cruise industry, uh, the, the total value of economic activity related to Port Everglades amounted to $26.5 billion. Approximately 11,000 residents work for companies that provide direct services to Port Everglades, and more than 192,000 Florida jobs were impacted by the port. Suffice it to say, again, it's been a great year. The Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport increased overall passenger traffic this year by 3.3%, with a whopping 35.8 million travelers expected by the end of the year. In May, we awarded a $228 million construction contract as part of the Terminal Connector Project at FLL, a game changer for our airport, which is expected to be completed by 2027. This is all being accomplished under the steady and long-standing director of our highly respected airport director, Mark Gale, and his knowledgeable staff. Is Mark here? Didn't. Mark, where's Mark? So he's in the back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Construction projects also got a lot of attention this year as Broward began to work for, to, uh, to began work on the Port Everglades Bypass Road. This new roadway will improve the traffic flow around the port and accommodate additional drivers expected from uh, uh, the expansion of our convention center. The new Broward County Supervisor of Elections Office also opened for business this year. Uh, commissioners approved $103 million for funding of this building. This building, I want you to listen to this, this building was finished on time and on budget. I'm proud to say that it was up and running in time for the general election and uh, our two uh, commissioners on the uh, election got to, I did on the primary, but the general, thank you so much, Commissioner Fisher and Commissioner Udine. Broward also completed work to expand and improve our central regional park in Lauderhill. Over $11 million investment to bring the cricket stadium up to par was completed and ready to go. We were only we were one of only three venues chosen in the, uh, for the ICC men's T20 World Cup cricket games. The first of the games were played, the first time the games were played here in the United States. It is a big win for Broward County. Congratulations to our commissioner, Hazel Rogers, for her commitment and, and advocacy and dedication to that. And uh, also, many congratulations to our uh, County Parks and Recreation Director, Dan West, and his staff. You, you consistently exceed expectations. Broward County Transit played a, a major role in every significant event taking place this year. Decorated buses brought passengers to the Cricket World Cup, the Florida Panthers games, and numerous cultural events such as Juneteenth, Martin Luther King Day, July 4th, Memorial Day, and the Stonewall Pride Parade in Wilton Manors. We made some history of our own with the unveiling of express electric buses. These sleek electric buses transport passengers to and from Broward and Miami-Dade. FDOT is a partner in this service that offers comfortable and eco-friendly eco rides for com uh, computer, uh, commuters. 
sig significant service and infrastructure improvements continue to gain speed under the county's Primo Mobility Plan and the financing from the Mobility Advancement Plan or the Penny for Transportation surtax. MAP has completed 500 county and municipal sur surtax projects since the program's inception in 2019. The funding supports transportation projects, fiber optics improvements, signalization development, pedestrian and bike infrastructure, and brings enormous economic opportunities to Broward. I encourage everyone to visit their, the website at broward.org slash penny for transportation. It has a complete update on the information about projects. Um, and I do want to recognize uh, for all of these transportation issues, the outstanding efforts of uh, Corey Cuff Lonergan, who is the Director of Transportation. Thank you. Even though cultural arts funding took a blow this year, when the governor vetoed all funding for these vital programs and events uh, that, bring, that what we bring to our communities, Broward stepped up. 90 arts organizations received grants this year, totaling $6.7 million, and an additional 400,000 was awarded to 84 artists. This year, Broward launched the county's largest public arts project that will transform the 17th Street Causeway Bridge. This project was awarded to artist Tracy Deer, and we are working on permitting with FDOT. I look forward to this amazing visual, visual, visual experience, everyone under the sun, everyone under the stars. And I do want to recognize Phil is in the audience too, director of our cultural arts. Phil, I see you. Okay. Of course, Broward County's team, the Florida Panthers, won the, who, who won the Stanley Cup, won the Stanley Cup. We welcome visitors from Canada and around the world to watch the Panthers defeat the Edmonton Oilers to win their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. It was so exciting. And in addition, I want everyone to know that we have signed a term sheet with the Florida Panthers that will keep them, the team, here for another 19 years. Vice Mayor Fur, you often sing the praises of our outstanding and award-winning library system with good cause. This year, Broward County Libraries celebrated their 50th anniversary. The number of people attending library programs increased this year by 20%, now serving more than 340,000 people. Total circulation of books and digital materials exceeds 8.5 million which is a 20%, as I mentioned, increase. It's no wonder that Broward County Libraries was honored with the Intellectual Freedom Award this year, and our library director who is here, Allison Grubbs, was named Administrator of the Year by the Florida Library Association. Allison. <laughs> Broward County continued to lead on issues of climate change. After 10 years of advocacy, the Central and Southern Florida Flood Control Project is finally advancing. <laughs> County and the South Florida Water Management Control District are partnering to accelerate the Broward County component. We have committed $5 million towards the resiliency study, which will be led by the district, with the goal to finalize recommendations and secure federal appropriations for this long overdue infrastructure improvements project. In September of this year, the Climate Change Task Force hosted the seventh annual Broward Leaders Resilience Roundtable with 81 attendees, that's a record, including many municipal officials, business and tribal leaders, the South Florida Water Management District, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and senior staff. Discussion focused on climate trends and impacts, as well as resilience planning needs and investments being advanced across the community. On a global level, Broward County became the first county and the 101st community to join the Resili Res Resilient Cities Network, a global, the world's global leading resilience network. Through this partnership and shared experience, we are helping to maintain our country's national engagement in this issue of global importance. And I, of course, want to thank uh, my co-chair of climate change, but the number one person uh, for um, uh, environmental issues uh, on this dais and probably you know around the whole community, 
except for one person, and that's Dr. Jennifer Harado, who is director of our Department of Resilience. Thank you. I want to also say that Broward is at the forefront of so many environmental initiatives, such as solar energy installations, a countywide net zero plan to achieve net zero by 2050, and so much more, as I mentioned, thanks to the leadership and, director of our, uh, and dire uh, direction uh, of our amazing Dr. Harado. I have only been able to highlight and recognize a handful of the incredible programs and people we serve in, in this county. But it's important to celebrate our successes and face our challenges as a Broward County team of more than 6,000 employees who work hard to serve the public every day. My many thanks to each one of you. Serving our county with our best and nothing less would not be possible without the leadership and day-to-day -day guidance of our county administrator, Monica Sapero, and her <laughs> and her executive team. Accolades and acknowledgments are also due to our county attorney, Drew Myers, and our county auditor, Bob Melton, and their respective staffs for the tremendous work they have achieved this year. You all enable us to work together and accomplish our shared goals. Thank you both so much. I want to thank my commission, my commission colleagues for the leadership they have shown this year as we tackled very difficult problems facing many of the most vulnerable people in our community. There are three county employees I haven't mentioned yet, and they are Harrison, my chief of staff, Eugenia, and Sabrina, my two commission aides. Thank, thank you. My deep thanks to the three of you for championing social justice values every single day, for caring and for having empathy for others, and for always helping people with incredible needs who call our office every day. And thank you for running an office that enables me to be successful in a job that is busy, detailed, and a lot of hard work, especially when you're mayor. However, the clock that was in your office is in mine, and it's running down right now. <laughs> I want to express my sincere gratitude to the 1.9 million residents of Broward County and to the residents of District 1 who have entrusted me with the honor of representing them for one more term. Lastly, but certainly not least, I want to thank my husband David and my family for all of their love and support. I have now served in office for 20 years. Seems hardly impossible. And David has been there to support me every step of the way. Actually, he probably is the one that got me into all of this. <laughs> when people take marriage vows, as we did 62 years ago, the vows include lots of promises, lots of phrases for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish which all add up to the promise to stay committed and faithful no matter what happens. I can truly say that we feel that way and we are always there to love and support each other and our family. Thank you. And lastly, I wanna say I look forward to continuing the initiatives I championed as mayor and working with all of you my colleagues, my constituents, to ensure a, a bright future for everyone, and I mean that, everyone who lives in Broward County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, there you go. Do you have the strip? Yeah. You have to pass the gavel to me. I'm gonna. I pass the gavel. To okay, you got it. There you go. <laughs> you got it.